Hey guys, how you doing? Sorry I haven't posted recently, there really hasn't been too much interesting going on in my life, uh, and I've been a little lazy enjoying the Florida weather since coming down from Quantico. But uh, here we're looking at flight 2 out of 12 or so flights that I need in order to complete IFS. Uh, what you're seeing me do right now is the run-up checklist, and uh, as soon as we taxi to the hold short, we'll cover the departure brief, abort brief, and before takeoff checklist. But uh, I'm flying out of Peter Prince right now, 204, it's just south of NAS Fighting Field up in Milton, Florida. Uh, and the aircraft that you're looking at is a Piper Warrior II PA-28-161. Uh, it's a, just a single engine, low wing aircraft at 160 horsepower and with a uh, maneuvering speed of about 110 knots. So not too fast, but uh, definitely a stable platform and uh, good to learn on, which is perfect for IFS. So that's, uh, that's probably why they picked it. But yeah, as you can see here, uh, going over the run-up checklist, uh, I've forgotten how to check the ammeter and do the magneto, so my flight instructor is nice enough to walk me through that after putting his head in his palm one or two times. But uh, hopefully as we move on to the later flights, I can get that down pat and he won't have to really guide me anymore. Uh, the goal is to, by flight four, have everything down so that he doesn't even have to say a word. But as you can see here, we're taxiing up to that hold short. Uh, the aircraft designation, obviously you have to say who you're talking to, who you are, and then what you're going to do. So for that movement that we just did right there, we'd have to say Milton Traffic uh, on the CTAF, uh, which is 122.97. You have to say Milton Traffic, 52 Hotel, which is the aircraft that we're in, taxiing to Hold Short, Runway 18. Pretty straightforward. In the pattern here, there are about five or six aircraft that we had to wait for, so we are just feet on the brakes, kind of hanging out taking a sip of Gatorade and just preparing for the flight. The door is open because it is really hot in the cockpit. With the Florida humidity and the heat being about 90 uh, to 95 degrees, it gets really, really hot in there really, really quick. So here we go. As you can see, we're taking off, uh, taxiing to take off, center line the aircraft and full throttle. Once we hit about 60 knots, uh, we lift off. And from there, we're flying. It's pretty simple. Uh, the takeoff is easy, it's the landing that's the hard part, but we get into that later. Um, so right now we're heading down towards I-10. There is a bridge that goes from Milton and Pace uh, over to Pensacola proper, and that is our waypoint. It kind of helps guide us along Pensacola's Class C airspace, uh, and then out to the practice area. So what we're going to be covering today in, in the flight is what Bert is doing right now. Uh, is just adjusting uh, the communication frequencies so that way we can talk to Pensacola Approach and that way they know that we're entering the airspace and that we're just going to the practice area and that we won't get involved with any of their traffic. What we are covering in the flight today is uh, slow flight, practicing power on and power off stalls as well. So slow flight we had covered in uh, flight number one, it was just an introductory flight but uh, we would covered a little bit extra so now we have to do a power on and power off stalls but it takes us about 20 minutes to get out to the practice airfield so we have some time to just kind of get used to the aircraft again uh, one of the issues we had run into today was a Cessna 172 that was circling at 1000 feet which is directly in the pattern so we had to climb to 1500 feet uh, to avoid him well he just kind of did his thing so as we're heading out there Bert and I are kind of looking back at him as you saw and uh, making fun of him more or less because we're really not sure what he's doing but you can see us maneuvering around here a little bit trying to uh, point out traffic and uh, avoid the clouds which is a little bit difficult to do considering we have tropical storm Barry coming in uh, so we're just lucky that we're able to fly and that the weather is good enough for that it looked a little ominous coming in, but we had approximately 10 miles of visibility, and uh, as you can see, we had scattered clouds at about 15, 1,500 feet or 1,500 feet. So, but that's what most of the turns are going for now. And uh, as we kind of get into the airspace, we are going to do uh, slow flight again to just practice that, and uh, then we are going to move on into the stalls afterwards. So as you can see here, we are setting up 
for the slow flight. Uh, I had a complete brain fart here and it's a little embarrassing and uh, I had forgotten that at 85 knots or thereabout you're supposed to pull your first notch of flaps. I thought it was at 75 and Bert, the instructor, very kindly asked me what the hell I was doing. So I had to speed back up and uh, gain airspeed again to try it one more time. So right about here is where you see me go again, so power down, first notch of flaps, second notch of flaps, and then third notch of flaps, and then from there you go full power again, and uh, walk your flaps back out, and that's basically slow flight, so you have to maintain a speed that is just lower uh, than what you would normally do, essentially, it's basically just a very easy way of explaining slow flight. The purpose of slow flight is to prepare you for landings, so it teaches you how to walk your flaps in and out uh, so you can get used to uh, decreasing your airspeed uh, as you come in on your downwind, your base, and then on your final approach into the airfield. So that's basically what slow flight is. From here you're going to see the aircraft start to shudder quite a bit. What Bird is demonstrating for me is a power off stall so you can see how the aircraft is kind of bobbing up and down as if it's head banging like it's at a rave or a party now what that's happening is repeated stalls of the aircraft so the nose will pitch down uh, and up in that stall fashion uh, and then in order to recover from that essentially all you need to do is add full power maintain uh, or gain and then maintain a positive rate of climb and from there put the nose back towards the horizon but he was demonstrating this so that way when I perform the maneuver myself, I would know exactly what I'm feeling. From there, he gives me the controls, so in order to hand off controls, he has to say to me, your controls. I need to reply to him uh, with the affirmative, my controls, stating that I understand that I need to take controls uh, of the aircraft from him. And from there, in order to confirm that he is no longer touching the controls, he says one more time, your controls. And then from there, I have control of the aircraft. What you are about to see Bird demonstrate is what's known as a power on stall. You can see the nose pitch up, the aircraft stall, and then the nose fall back towards the horizon. What a power on stall is designed to simulate is if you are taking off and you pull back too quickly, you lose airspeed and you hit that stall. What do you do then? Because you're close to the runway, you can't just do nothing and you should already be at full power because you're trying to take off, so adding more power is not going to be the answer, especially in a single engine propeller plane. The remedy for this is quite simple. Because we're in a piper, uh, we don't use flaps, so it's not like we could uh, extend them. We could, but we don't. The solution for us is to just lower the nose, rebuild that airspeed up, and then from there try to gain that positive rate of climb and maintain that over any obstacles that we see. So when you see us going here, that is what we're practicing right now. When you can see me raising and lowering the flaps, that is because we are practicing power on and power off stalls. Just at Bert's discretion, whatever he tells me to do, I do, essentially. So as much fun as flying is, unfortunately, we're only allowed a certain amount of flight time, and eventually we have to head back. So now we turn towards the north and head back into Pensacola's classy airspace, and then from there we'll go back to the airfield. When you see Bert touching the control stick, just like he did there, what he's doing is he's keying the mic so that way he can talk to Pensacola International and let them know exactly what our intentions are. For this, leaving the practice area, we need to go into the airspace and then stay over the water because we have to avoid uh, an outlying field, a naval outlying field called Chukta. Basically, they fly drones out of there, and that's not something that really we really want to get into as a VFR flight, especially under a student pilot certificate like the one that I have. So we avoid it all together and stay over the water. One of the perks of learning how to fly at NAS Pensacola and in the surrounding region is that you get to see beautiful beaches like the one stretched out in front of you. 
That stretch of beach is in between Pensacola Beach and Navarre. There's a beach road along there that is gorgeous to drive along and even nicer to fly over. As you can see here, both Bert and I are extremely relaxed now. We had a little bit of turbulence when we transitioned from the land over to the water, but now we are just in straight level flight, heading back towards the airfield. Usually, Bert and I use this time to talk to each other about anything and everything, whether it's about our personal lives or something about the flight. As much as he is there to instruct me, we aren't very good together if we don't form some sort of personal relationship. So that's exactly what we tried to do. And what better way to do that when you're actually up in the air flying with that person. As we approach the edge of the practice field, we radio in to Pensacola International and let them know that we have Peter Prince Field in sight. From there, we head to our next reference point, the I-10 bridge, which you can see just off of the nose of the aircraft. From there, our next reference point on the ground is going to be a big lake as well as a row of power lines. From there, that tells us exactly where we need to fly in order to join the downwind and then to turn onto the base leg and then final approach for Peter Prince Airfield. These reference points on the ground are very useful and I encourage you to find your own for your own airport. I'm sure they've already been established you just need to ask your flight instructors which ones they go to. For us, as soon as our wingtips come across at midpoint of the field where the office is, we need to lower the flaps to the first notch and then reduce the power. From there, as we turn onto the base, we need to again lower the not flaps to the second notch and then to the third notch when we approach flight. From here, you can see my landing. It was good until Bert jinxed me and a gust of wind blew me off course. After that, Bert opens the door to check our rear, because we had a Cessna that was just a little too close for comfort, but we were able to get off the runway in time. From here, we stop at the edge of the hold short line, and we complete the after landing checklist. You see the propeller stop, and then Bert has to restart the engine. What happened there was, I made the mixture a little bit too lean and reduced the power too much. From there, the engine stopped working. It's very similar to when a motor stalls in a car with a manual transmission. If you let the clutch out, but don't give the car any gas, the engine is not going to work and it stalls. This is very similar to that. From here, we go back on to the Trident ramp, we find our tie down point and we complete our shutdown and securing checklists. From there, we go back inside and do the deep. If you guys made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see. I'll be recording the rest of my flight, so hopefully I can do some commentary over that. If you have suggestions, let me know. As always, have a good day. Fly good. Don't suck.